Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Photographer's Journey, a podcast for the photography community. I'm your host, Lucas Dreija, and I'm also the CEO and co-founder of Format. On this podcast, I'll be interviewing a diverse range of successful photographers from around the globe about their journeys as artists and entrepreneurs. We'll talk about their stories, their work, their inspiration, and how they have grown their businesses. Uh, welcome to our second episode in the season called uh, Photographers, COVID, and the Future, where I'm talking to photographers about how they got started, how COVID has impacted them, their recent work, and their outlook for the future. I hope that their stories and their work will be the source of inspiration for all for you as you continue your own journey through the pandemic and beyond. Today, I'm joined with Andrea Di Lorenzo. Thanks for joining me today, Andrea. So Andrea is a well-known food photographer and a travel photographer based out of Rome, Italy. Over the past 10 years, he has worked with more than a thousand restaurants, hotels, pizzerias, cocktail bars, and has traveled around the world on assignments for magazines and private clients. Thank you for joining me today, Andrea. Thank you for having me. I know you had a busy day and you're calling me from Rome, Italy. I'm in Toronto, Canada, but uh, happy that you were able to make the time and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get to it. Um, first, I wouldn't mind starting to talk a little bit about and understanding your photography journey. Uh, how you got started in photography, and how you ended up becoming a food photo- food photographer specifically. Well, uh, I mean, I ended up, let's start from the late part, from the last part. I started being a food photographer by chance. So I started as a, uh, with a degree in movie, in a history and critics of movies, cinema. So, I mean, it was a pretty long jump from cinema to you know to food but uh, by chance I had the opportunity to work with an agency in, here in Rome who started working in uh, social advertising social media management uh, back in 2010 and since then I was really involved in the industry and uh, lately right now in 2021 I'm very very into the industry and one of the uh, I would say most important, but one of the biggest photographer of food and beverage in Italy, and of course travel photographer. But this is uh, something that has been stuck for the last uh, year and a little bit more than one year, but still going on, you know. But yeah, yeah. I started as a movie critics, a movie critic, and then I turned out I wanted to be turned out that I want to be a director. But then I changed my mind and I moved to photography. And then I move from movie to food. And it was a pretty nice job, I must admit. Hmm. But so, you know, food is a very specific type of photography. Uh, you know, I, I, how, what was the first, uh, how did you get into it? What was the first step that you took to get into food photography? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, as I told you, I found this job and mm, I found this job announce on the, on the internet, this job request from this agency, mm. and I said to myself, okay, I, I re- I'm Italian, I like food, so uh, I should give it a try. But before that, I had the opportunity to shoot like uh, zero food. It was my first job as a food photographer, so it mm. really wasn't a, an idea. Uh, I really... Uh, it was more like a suggestion, you know, at the very beginning. So mm-hmm. I said to myself, let's try it. Let's go for it and uh, let's see what, what happens. And it turned out that I was really into it because mm-hmm. uh, even if it was my very first job as a food photographer, I do recall that it was in a two Michelin star restaurant and it's mm-hmm. something of a sort of a big deal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I found myself like, okay, I like this job. They like me why not give it a try? And so mm-hmm. I keep it on going. I, I still do some movies from time to time. I write about movies. I, I was a still photographer as well. But then I realized that the food industry, food and beverage industry was my field. I really love that. And I really love eating and drinking of, as well, of mm-hmm. course. But I really love the people involved in the industry. Mm-hmm. And so I keep on going. I kept mm-hmm. going and... Uh, even even today, I had a, <laughs> another job with a restaurant, and yeah, you said correctly, more a thousand restaurants, pizzerias, and so on in ten years, but maybe even something more, because mm. I I really can't keep a track 
of how many God, God. places I visited. Well, first of all, congratulations, starting from something that you found through, a, you know, a single job posting and, and, you know, launching your food photography career and becoming who you are today is, is impressive. Um, this is a pretty generic question, but is your, most of your food photography shot on location at these restaurants or do you take uh, and you set up studio shots and you have your own studio to do these shots? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's correct to define my food photography as a location photography. I work mainly on location, so it's much easier to me to work on location because I, you know, working with uh, high-end chef, Michelin star restaurants and cocktail bars, you have all the facilities there by yourself and uh, even the people there working for you is literally much easier. And uh, mm -hmm. my job is not like an advertising photographer, so uh, I do work in studios. Uh, but this is like 5% of my job. I do work on location and so uh, working and traveling as well has become like a unique part of my job. Got it. Uh, Rome is, you know, one of the capitals of amazing cuisine in the world. Um, is it a competitive uh, field of food photography in, in Rome, Italy? Uh, not really. Uh, no. I mean, Italy is a pretty challenging market, market. but mm. in Rome, we are not so many, you know, you know, in terms of food photographers. So we are uh, maybe two, three photographers working in food and having a huge impact on the industry. Uh, mm. So speaking about Italy, of course, we are much more, uh, but Rome is not very competitive. Uh, so that, that's why I try to move outside of the city, but... Uh, I mean, my main field, my main uh, place of uh, job involvement is here in Rome, of course. And now with the COVID situation, it's even, uh, it's even more than normal, yeah. as you can yeah. imagine. Yeah, no, for sure. And we'll get into that a little bit later on. And I'm sure, uh, I'm sure COVID has impacted not only your personal life, but your, your professional life as well. So we'll touch on that. Um, so, you know, at Format, we believe that successful photographers are both you know, amazing uh, creative uh, photographers and, and they've developed a creative journey, but also their business journey, uh, become business people, entrepreneurs. How has that side of the journey, photography journey come for you? Have you naturally become a business person? Have, were you a business person before? Have you trained in any way to, of becoming a good businessman or is this just coming naturally to you? Uh, well, no, it wasn't really natural. I mean, I, uh, I was lucky working with a Swiss photographer who taught me how to deal with money. And this was a really important part of my uh, growing, you know, professionally speaking. So, my growth. Uh, but then, I mean, being a businessman is uh, it's a very complicated thing. I mean, be, me, I am more like a creative, a creative guy. So having to deal with people in terms of money, in terms of contract, in terms of pre-production, post-production, and all, it, um, all this part of the job, you know, beside shooting a photo, it was really, really, really difficult. Uh, right now, after 10 years, I can call myself a businessman because I spend so much time in terms of uh, signing contracts, uh, preparing contracts, speaking about money with clients, but it was a very long journey. It, it's not something that you, I mean, you can re literally born with it. You can be a natural account or you can't, or you are just a normal person who, have, who struggle speaking about mm -hmm. money. And in, here in Italy, it's uh, really easy to struggle sp speaking about money because it's mm -hmm. very <laughs> difficult to speak to someone else about how much you earn, how much you would like to earn. So, but uh, lately, I mean, I'm pretty confident with my business side and, uh, but I still hope to get, get better, you know, like right. everything. And, and this, uh, this person that taught you about kind of the business that you mentioned, some Swiss, uh, Swiss photographer, uh, that, that taught you that what specifically were some of the takeaways for you? Was it, you know, how to price your work or was it, was that person a mentor for you? How did that relationship help you well it, you. it it was a mentor first okay. first of all because um, it was the first photographer uh, i worked with as an assistant mm -hmm. and uh, in like four five years of assisting him 
he taught me about the value of my job. So mm. how much the value of a photographer and the, the value of one photograph can be really, really worth for someone else. So mm. the, um, mm. this is very important because somehow, in, and lately in my field, it's been very difficult to make people understand what's the real worth in yeah. terms, not yeah. just, you know, not about just about money, but in terms of uh, commercial speaking, you know. Yes. yes. So he taught me about getting a prize and uh, explaining people how much is important to get good photographers and good photography for your job and your um, and your restaurant and your movies or whatever you know you you do yeah and i can imagine you know social media is one of the main reasons for uh devaluing of photography work and potentially even you know stock photography and the growth of stock photography and free stock photography as well probably impacted that as well uh, and maybe we can touch on that a little bit later on um i'd love to get into a little bit of your work i was looking at your uh, format website today and I'd love to maybe, let's start, um, would love to ask you about a specific photograph on your site. Uh, it features, I think, what is a, a noodle bowl with a lot of, with an open paint can. And I think what is a, is a head of lettuce painted in pink. I'm not exactly sure if it's a head of lettuce. Um, tell me a little bit about this photograph uh, and its background. Well, this is a very lucky shot. I mean, this is uh, an impro shot because uh, mm. there was this restaurant that was restyling all his mm. location, turning from a very classical re Italian restaurant to an uh, ar artist-made restaurant. So this artist came and said, okay, I want to, p uh, to paint everything in pink. Mm. So with the, the chef and the owner, we choose to create... Uh, uh, some pictures, some photos that were like food with this pink paint. And mm. so we were working, we have uh, paper uh, all around, you know, in order not to uh, get the floor dirty with this pink paint. And uh, I remember this girl coming in, into the room and uh, putting this dish of ramen, pink ramen, of course, made for the shoot, on the paper, close to the pink paint, you know, to the can, the lettuce that we used before. And I, I remember looking at the, the dish and saying to myself, oh my gosh, this is a perfect picture because this is really uh, getting the, the point of all the situation. And it was very alive. And, mm, mm. and I really love it because somehow I'm always uh, very, I, I'm always improvising in my job because mm. I go to a location and I study with the chef or the owner uh, the location itself and uh, we, s we decide where to shoot the dishes or uh, the portraits and so this was like a very specific idea of my photography. And then on, you know, on the other side, of, so this is I would say I think categorized as, as cuisine work and then on the other side or your kind of your more, more cuisine like photography and then on the other side sometimes I'll come across this very minimal style of photography, and I think the one that I, that's pointing my attention to is is a photo of a of a red shrimp. What's the what's the story behind a photograph like that? Well, this is a very uh, editorial job. So I was in this Michelin star restaurant, and I was shooting a, an editorial for an Italian magazine. And mm. so I had this uh, very minimal, minimalistic dish because you, you can see there is just this red shrimp. It's very nicely done with some herbs on top. And, uh, but how do you treat a dish like that? I mean, you can't really create a set, a huge mm -hmm. set, because you, you really need to focus on the, on the food, on the craftsmanship. So the idea was to use a very strong light, a very harsh light with an, just a small reflection to get some shadows and enhance just the little red shrimp and using the geometry of the dish as well to get an even more strong impact, but still mm -hmm. having just a white dish on a white background. And, and it's very nice that you choose these two pictures because they are like the antithesis of my job. So on, a, mm. on one side, you got the gourmet side, of course, where you really literally have to treat food like a, uh, a work of art, 
like a, mar a statue made of marble, for example. And on the other side, you got the commercial job where you have to find a very nice idea every time you go to a restaurant to convey uh, mm -hmm. an idea or a storytelling idea or a situation or a renewal or whatever. So it, these two images are really like the two sides of, of a coin. And the coin is my photography. And and how do you decide? At very like, is, do you have a framework uh, when you decide to switch from one or the other, or is it very clear when you go out on an assignment what kind of photo you're shooting when you're going there? Uh, well, I have to say that I have an idea when I mm -hmm. get to the place, but then I'm really open to mm -hmm. to the situation. I mean, if I sp if speaking to someone there, like the chef or uh, even a waiter, and he points out to something that I didn't thought about you know I can change my mind and switch to another situation but of course when you work working with a, uh, a magazine and you have a layout to respect of course this is a little more strict in terms of yeah, uh, yeah. opportunity for uh, style you see yourself branching out internationally do you want to stay in Italy as a food photographer where do you see yourself moving or, or, or where do you see your career moving to, to? Mm. Right now, I'm living in a comfort zone. I mean, Italy is my place, Rome is my city, and uh, I'd love to keep working here. But of course, I mean, as a, every photographer working in the industry or every photographer at Tukur, uh, you, you really want to go out and uh, try yourself with these different situations and mm. uh, meet new people. Because it's very important. The, a very important part of this job is... Uh, the social connection that you can make. Mm. I mean, you meet a lot of people, you learn literally a lot, a ton of information every day, you get in touch with something else, with someone else, and uh, going abroad, having the chance to work with uh, foreign people, with people very distant from your point of view, it's really important because it opens up, it opens up your mind and uh, helps you with your job, not just abroad, but in your town as well yeah and then and then um, um why do you do you have an opinion why why you believe you people believe restaurants, people, and restaurants and businesses keep calling, businesses you, back keep calling you back for photography why, why is it about your photography is it, about your photography? Is it the way you carry, you carry yourself as a business photographer, photographer or as a photographer in general is it general? the way that you build relationships your approach to photography do you have a understanding of why people continuously come back to you for work um i don't uh, I have to admit that I don't. I'm a, I, I do believe I'm a good professional. I'm a good photographer, mm -hmm. but I'm a very nice person as well. I became a sort of, a, of an influencer for the industry in Rome lately. Mm -hmm. uh, that's because, of course, working for 10 years in, a, mm -hmm. in the industry makes you uh, someone that everybody knows, uh, that knows a little bit of everyone and everything. So... I must admit there is a lot of things that a photographer mm. needs to work and uh, uh, being capable, and it's pretty sad to say, but being capable of taking good picture is just a, a part. Let's say a 50% of your job, of your profession, then you have the, everything else. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with that, right? Like you're dealing with clients every day, you're, you're communicating with people, then you have to actually do the business side of photography. So yeah, there's the creative component of photography, but everything else is the reason you're there. Uh, you know, the photo at the end of the day, the photo has to be amazing, like, you know, clearly your work is, but it's all about uh, the business side, the communication, the human interaction point, where whereas why I, I believe people are calling you back. Uh, based on the kind of conversations we've had, uh, let's let's move the topic into social media a little bit. What is your uh, perspective of how social media has changed your career as a photographer? And let's maybe touch on specifically Instagram because I think Instagram seems to be the social media platform that is image heavy uh, and used widely by you know people that are taking in kind of that visual format. How has uh, Instagram impacted your your career? Um, I, I, as I told you. Being a photographer is just a part of your job. Mm -hmm. uh, being on the Instagram, uh, for me, it was like uh, opening up to, of course, to many people about my job, but uh, it became also uh, a place where I could show other people 
my idea about food, my idea about the restaurant industry, and to show support to the industry as well. So um, it's not just a portfolio. I was speaking uh, to a pastry chef today about it because she was getting into Instagram pretty late, I must admit, mm -hmm. but we were speaking about the fact that you just can consider Instagram a portfolio like your site. Even if it's a very, very strong portfolio, if it lacks humanity, if it lacks uh, the kind of engagement to other people, I mean, people have to reflect themselves in your picture or in your stories in order to mm -hmm. get engagement, in order to get in touch with you. And uh, this is very uh, important and you can get it just being real, not just being professional. So you have to take sides, you have to express yourself and you have to be a little bit carefree. I mean, you mm -hmm. have to be a little bit, uh, as we say, leggero, you have to be light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I know that uh, from what I can tell on, on your Instagram, COVID has impacted your personal life as well as your business life. Would you mind touching on how COVID has uh, specifically impacted you? I got COVID like in March and I spent one month stuck. Mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty harsh, but more than that, I mean, COVID struck the restaurant industry very harshly here in Italy in the last 12 months. Since mm -hmm. March 20, 2020, we literally struggled struggle with work. It was a very difficult situation. I mean, me as a photographer, of course, I was, uh, I lost more than half of my jobs. That's because restaurant closed because of COVID. Delivery was a part of the new situation, new economic situation, but it wasn't really something where you call a professional photographer to get photos to, you know, they, they started to take picture by themselves uh, and uh, the hospitality field shut down. So this was a very huge loss for me as well. But as I told you, uh, when this happened, uh, my main concern was to, was to stay close to the ones that were close to me in terms mm -hmm. of clients, in terms of friends that I made during my journey. And so I started to call them every day, get in touch with them, uh, sending messages. Uh, sometimes I did some photographer for, uh, photography for them as well, uh, for uh, half of my fee or a very low fee respect to my normal fees, my normal wages. Uh, that's because it was a very difficult moment and I say and I thought it was my part to, I, I wanted to do my part you know so mm -hmm. being close to these people being their friends more than their photographer was a very important moment to me because it showed to these people that it wasn't just about photography it's, just, it's not just about a profession. It's not just about taking good picture. It's about creating connection with people mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, creating very strong relationship with these people. Yeah, and I think you touched on this last time we spoke um, that you went out of your way to help uh, smaller businesses during that time as well. Um, do, you, do you mind going into that a little bit? But... Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, as I told you, I, I helped some, some friends the, that have uh, restaurants or uh, small bars uh, and uh, it was really natural. I mean, I didn't really think about the economic part, you know. Mm -hmm. We were in, we lived a moment where everyone was on the same level. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm helping you because you're my friend, because I do care about, your, about you and I, do, I, I believe in what you do in terms of uh, food, in terms of drink, in terms of uh, uh, business, everything. But at the same time, I'm helping an industry. I'm helping mm -hmm. the industry. And this is something that should be getting back to me somehow when everything, when all this COVID situation will be over. So we did a few photo shooting small ones but you know there wasn't very much to communicate because of course there was no new menu there was no new drinks uh, uh, there were stories there were mm -hmm. people struggling with their work 
So mm -hmm. we try to convey this situation in images and uh, somehow it worked. How do you foresee things working when you know we're back to the new normal? Do you see yourself being very busy, busier than usual? Do you have a, any future foresight of, of what this will what look this like? Will look <laughs> I think it will be hell on earth for us photographers because even right now uh, I'm floated with requests, not just from mm -hmm. restaurants but from uh, hotels, uh, from brands that it's pretty new. Uh, for me to get brands coming to me mm. and uh, mm. so and this is just uh, and the very start of this new beginning so uh, I do believe that in September let's say September October I will be floated with uh, mm. with work so I'm starting to get people working with me I got some new assistant a post producer and uh, hopefully everything will be back uh, to normality and we'll be back to our normal life and normal job routine. You know, when Rome comes back to normal, like you said, you're, you're, I'm sure you're going to be super busy. Do you foresee changing how you operate as a, as a photographer? Will you be increasing your rates to make room, uh, to, make, you know, to make sure you fit everything? Uh, will you just be taking on more work? Do you have any thoughts there? Uh, no, no. I, uh, I, I, I don't want to have you know, too many jobs. On my in my hands because somehow you lose quality you know mm -hmm. you you can't really have too many things to think about you have to decrease your uh, your clients you have to decrease your jobs in order to get the top quality possible mm -hmm. so um, I'm not sure about my rates I'm, I still have to think about it but that surely that's something that I that I will do that I can do because raising your uh, your rates makes you uh, less appealing for small business, but it helps you know getting more bigger ones. But I will yeah. still help you know small business like friends business and uh, business I do believe in in order to get this industry industry going on. Got it. Uh, just based on you know the conversation we're having today and and knowing what I know about you and getting to know you, uh, my belief is that you're a successful photographer because you truly care about your clients and not only about the restaurants and the work that you're doing, but you care about more than that, right? You you care about the relationship you're building with them, you care about their success potentially. You know, you said during COVID, you went out of your way to check in on them, make sure that they're doing well. You know, that goes above and beyond of what a business person would do, a typical business person would do, I would say. And I do truly believe that, you know, the businesses that go above and beyond and care about their clients and the customers do see value in that, whether it's, you know, those relationships lasting longer or, uh, those people, those customers and clients uh, turn into friends that then end up recommending you a lot more. Would you agree with, with that assessment? I do believe that it's a very huge part of my job and uh, my success depends on that as well. It's not just about being a good photographer. You have to be uh, a good human being and uh, mm -hmm. somehow you have to turn yourself in a friend for some of your clients and uh, it's very nice to see that some of, our, of my clients became turned out to be my friends in mm. the end so right now i can count uh, not many but a few very nice friends very close friends in the industry and i'm really happy about that and i'm really happy as well that this part of my job is considered because you know uh, i i don't want to be just uh, a photographer i i want to be an help to these people I want to be someone who can help them to grow, prosperate, but also I want to be someone they can rely on. And even if they have a, a very small problem, like, uh, oh, Andrea, we, got a, we have to change the light bulbs in our restaurant. Can you give us advice about which color we can choose? I mean, I, I'm really open to be mm -hmm. uh, your counselor on that. Or just about, oh, we made a new dish, we made a new cocktail, we, uh, why don't you pass and you try it and tell us what you think. Um, I mean, I, I love to eat and drink, and so this, is, this would be perfect. <laughs> and yeah, it would yeah. be helpful on both, on both sides, you know. And 
I really, I really like it, and I hope people, the people I'm working with, uh, appreciate that as well. Mm. And then, you know, just to summarize, where, where do you, where do you go from here next? Uh, what, what's next for you? Uh, well, next there's Milan, then uh, there's Venice. Uh, lately, I started again traveling around Italy, and I'm really, really happy about that because uh, one of the main, uh, one of the core of my photography is to travel all around Italy and Europe and the world as well. So being able to travel again, it's uh, it makes me really happy, and uh, I got some very nice projects coming on. Uh, that will see the light in autumn or the next year, but I won't talk about that because I'm pretty scaramantic, so I will touch hood <laughs> in order <laughs> to get it done. And uh, But I see... I'm positive. I'm really positive about what's coming next. And I hope this positivity will go for uh, not just for me, but for all the people in the industry, all the photographers, mm -hmm and all the people around me. That sounds, that sounds really exciting. Uh, do you have advice for photographers that would want to aspire to become a successful photographer like yourself in the food photography industry and potentially travel industry? You have to make mistakes, a lot of mistakes. I do remember taking so, so many horrible pictures in order to get the perfect one. And uh, that really gives you the idea of our job. You, you have to get your hands dirty. <laughs> you have to take pictures. You have to study. You have to try anything new that comes to your mind. And uh, this is very important. Not to be afraid of making mistakes because mistakes will going to pay. Um, where can people find you online and connect with you if they want to reach out? Well, of course, I got my formats portfolio. So www dot andrea di lorenzo dot it or you can find myself on the instagram so it's at andrea underscore di lorenzo or uh, that's it i mean i'm on facebook as well but i'm not using that so much i'm not on twitter because mm -hmm. for a photographer it's it's not really the right place to be but but this is just mm -hmm. my opinion and uh, so those are the two places where you can find me and I'm really open to get email, DMs. So if you have an, any idea, if you want just to chat with me or if you are in Rome and you want to get a coffee, just DM me, send me a mail and I will be more than happy to answer you and to get in touch with you. That's great. Thank you, Andrea, for your time, your, your insight today. Thank, thank you for sharing your journey with us and good luck with everything that you're doing, your photography career. And, you know, really look forward to hopefully meeting you one day and uh, meeting on some side of the world and getting a coffee. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Thank you very much, thank Lucas. You thank you again. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for joining me on the photographer's journey. Join me next time at format.com slash podcast for another photographer conversation as we learn more about how other professional photographers build their business. To support this podcast, don't forget to sign up for a free account at format.com. Podcast listeners get 20% off in the first year at Format with a promo code JOURNEY when you upgrade your plan. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and be sure to share it with your network. From all of us at Format, thank you. And remember, we're here to help you succeed. And I look forward to one day sitting down with you and learning how you've succeeded in your photography business. Until next time. Thanks.